again? Are you living above sin? Or are you just somebody who enjoys our company? You like where Christians are gathered, so you come. You like where Christians are together, so you choose to be a part of that. Brethren, the Lord has something important to share with us this morning. Have you, sir, have you, ma'am, been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you living daily by that saving power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I want us to pray this morning that the Lord himself will look us over, will wash us over, will cleanse us again, purge us again, so that sin will not have power over us, and we as the children of God will live for his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we worship you for this morning. Thank you for what you have taught us about consecration of the believer's service. Thank you, Lord, because you want us to live for you, serve you, obey you, be with you, both now and in the world to come. We, however, know that except a man be born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. He or she cannot be a part of God's eternal kingdom. As we have come before you this morning to hear your word, we pray you bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, let's open our Bibles to 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. We we'll read verse 4. 1 John Chapter 3, we read verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Brethren, God is speaking to you and to me today. Sin is not something to be tolerated in the life of a believer. Don't let anybody deceive you. That sin is okay. No, sin is not okay. Sin is not okay. If you are committing sin, you are not of God. Sin is something that made Jesus to come to this world to die so that you'll be free from it. If you have a child and your child is having repeated disciplinary issues in school, you are not happy with that child because you know if it continues like that, your child may eventually be expelled from that school. And even if the child turns it around and the child becomes good, guess what? It's now part of the history of that child that she was expelled from a school before. That he was expelled from a school before. Brethren, sin is the transgression of the law. What law? The law of God. What law? The word of God. God has a template for how he wants you to live. He has a template for how he wants me to live. So my brother, are you living above sin or you are living in sin? My sister, are you living a life that is free from sin or you still touch sin once in a while? Sin is the transgression of the law. The law of God is now written not on the tablets of stone, but on the heart of his children. If you are a child of God, if you come to this church, this fellowship, you hear the word of God repeatedly, continually, sometimes directly from here, sometimes from the central church. But the real question is, are you living a righteous life? Are you free from sin? Or are you committing sin privately, but publicly you behave like a Christian? The law of God is now written in the heart of his children, in the heart of those who are following him faithfully. Whereas God gave the children of Israel in the wilderness tablets of stone in Exodus chapter 20, God has given us his word for us to apply and have it in our heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not do what? Sin against thee. God does not want you to sin. 
God does not want you to be involved with sin. Someone said, sin is Satan's imparted nature. When you say S-I-N, Satan's imparted nature. When we act in defiance, in opposition, in, in, in rebellion towards God's opinion, towards God's commandment, towards God's orders, we sin. That is sin. Romans chapter 14, the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 23, the Bible says, And he that doubted is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatever is not of faith is sin. If you tell a lie, that is sin. If you take what does not belong to you, no matter how easy it is to take it, without permission, without an open grant for anybody to take it, that is sin. If you are getting emotionally or physically involved with somebody who is not your spouse, that is sin. If you are defiling your body in a way, maybe with alcohol, maybe with cigarettes, maybe with all these things they used to masturbate, that is sin. If you are involved in anything that brings disrepute to the name of the Lord, Something that your Christian brother must not see. Something your pastor must not see. Something that even if your wife sees, you'll be embarrassed. That is sin. Brethren, we need victory over sin. And the Lord will give it to us in Jesus' name. Today we are listening to the title, Victory Over Sin, The World and the Devil. Victory Over Sin, The World and the Devil. The World refers to the systems, the fashions, the culture of the society outside of God. The systems, the fashions, the culture of the society outside of God. So when you look at how people do things in the world, very soon now, the weather will be even much nicer. I believe in the morning also, the weather was good yesterday. Yesterday, we were like 53. Today, probably about 50. What do you notice in America once the weather is good? People start taking off their clothes. People want to show their skin. People want to feel free. If that is your motivation as a child, as somebody who comes to the church, you are not yet born again. The word of God clearly tells us to cover our nakedness. Brethren, the ways of the world are enmity to God, are against the way of God. Let's go back. So 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, I read verse 17, 1 John 2, verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lost thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth how long? Forever, forever. So if you want your life to last, if you want your legacy to last, if you want your existence to be meaningful, follow God. And don't be taken by the world. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8. That's Old Testament. And it confirms the same point. Isaiah 40 verse 8. The Bible says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So if you hold on to the Bible... If you live your life based on the Bible, your marriage based on the Bible, everything you are doing based on the Bible, guess what? Your life will be established. Your life will be favored. So I want you to keep that in mind. That's the world. What of the devil? The devil. The devil is a fallen archangel, also known as Lucifer, who tempted mankind into sin and who has hell reserved for him and his angels. That is the demons. The devil. It's a fallen archangel. That is a senior angel, also known as Lucifer, who tempted mankind into sin and has hell reserved for him and his angels. You will not go to hell in Jesus' name. Brethren, you have to be free from sin. That is the very essence of our coming together. What use is your coming to this church if you are still committing sin? If you are still doing some things that are ungodly, you are still drinking alcohol, what is your business with alcohol when you are a child of God? Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. 
How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sight of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That passage talks about how Satan lifted up himself. How Satan, just look at that verse 13. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Do you see it there? I will, I will, I will, I will. Just like our sister was saying in the lesson, when you are so focused on yourself, you don't respect others, you don't think about others, it's always about you. You are proud, you are proud. And God rejects pride. God does not tolerate pride. The Lord will help us. We will not be like the devil in Jesus' name. Just to further support the point about him being a fallen archangel, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom, he may devour. Satan has nothing good for you. Satan has nothing good planned for his own other than taking people to hell, which is not good. The Lord will have mercy on us. We will not be carried away. We will not end up in hell in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for who? The devil and his angels. Hell is not for me. I thought you say it for yourself. Hell is not for me. We will not go to hell in Jesus' name. Christ has already obtained the victory for us over sin, over the world, and over the devil. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 5, God bless you as you are opening your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1, 5, from verse 55 to 57. The Bible says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we're talking about today. Victory over, the, over sin. Victory over the world, and of course, victory over the devil. We're looking at three points very quickly, and uh, the Lord will bless you today. Point number one, acknowledging the problem of sin. Acknowledging the problem of sin. We have a problem as human beings, and our problem is that Satan wants us to sin. Satan wants us to put our hands into sin. Because once you sin, you are not of God. That's what we read initially. Don't let anybody deceive you that Christians commit sin. No, a sinner is not a Christian, and a Christian is not a sinner. So number one point is acknowledging the problem of sin. Number two, avoiding the pool of the world. Avoiding the pool of the world. If somebody is trying to pull you into trouble, you push yourself away, you get free from that person so that you don't get into trouble, avoiding the pull of the world. Number three, antagonizing, antagonizing the power of the devil. The Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. Let's go back to the book of Romans. We're now in point one, avoiding the problem of sin. Romans 6, verse 23. Sorry, I said avoiding, acknowledging. The problem of sin. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sin makes us unacceptable before God. Sin made God the Father to turn his face away from Christ while Christ was on the cross. So if you are tolerating sin in your life, sister, if you are tolerating sin in your life, brother, that's a serious issue because God is of purer eyes 
than to behold iniquity. Don't allow sin. Sin is a problem. Sin is a stain on the beautiful garment God gave man at creation. Sin is a stain on the beautiful garment that God gave man at creation. So when God made you, he did not make you to be a sinner. When I say you, I mean human being generally, Adam being the first man. But when Adam fell, Adam and Eve, they broke the covenant of life in the Garden of Eden. And since then, sin has been a problem for mankind. But my brother, my sister, Jesus came and delivered us. And you will not stay in the bondage of sin anymore in Jesus' name. So still establishing that point, let's still look in that same book of Romans chapter 3, verse 22. The Bible says, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of what? The glory of God. The black man has sinned. The white man has sinned. The rich one has sinned. The not so rich one has sinned. Everybody has sinned in one way or the other and come short of the glory of God. Why not come with me to the book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. Genesis 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. My brother, if you just try to be yourself, you are going to be a sinner. If your only goal in life is just to express yourself and be your own normal self, you are going to end up being a sinner. Because the nature of man is a sinful nature. It's a nature that brings down the anger of God. Why? Because man is depraved. Man has fallen. But thank God for Jesus Christ who shed his blood for our redemption. Be not deceived. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also read. That's Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. So sin is a problem. If you allow sin in your life, you are going to face the judgment of God. If you don't face it today, you will face it tomorrow. If you don't face it this year, you will face it next year. In fact, if you don't face it in this life, you will face it in eternity. That is why as Christians, we don't tolerate sin in our lives. We have given our lives to Jesus. We have repented of our sins and we belong to Jesus Christ. Brethren, we have to be careful. Jesus has already provided the means of overcoming sin, of overcoming the devil, of overcoming the world. But if you are still living under the control of sin, that is a problem. Brethren, sin is worse than Ebola. Can you imagine that? Sin is worse than coronavirus. Brethren, sin is worse than HIV. Pastor, what are you saying? Those are very terrible diseases. I know. That's why I gave that example. If a person, God forbid, ends up having Ebola, but he's born again, he does not have sin in his life, he has repented of his sins, yes, the person might die, but guess what? The person will go to heaven. If a person has HIV, always having to take antiretroviral drugs, blood check, people discriminate against you, well... If he dies, he's going to heaven. But if a person has sin in his life, sin in her life, no Ebola, no coronavirus, no HIV, and he lives his life and is happy and is comfortable and he dies in his sins, and she dies in her sins, she's going to hell to face the devil and his angels forever and ever and ever and ever. Now you tell me, which is worse? Of course, sin is worse. Brethren, sin is a problem. If there is anything in your life that is still putting you on the edge, maybe I'm sinning, maybe I'm not sinning, I beg you today, leave it alone. For the sake of your eternal life, leave it alone. For the sake of not wasting your time on earth, leave it alone. It's better not to be born at all than to be born and end up in hellfire. We will not go to hell in Jesus' name. 1 John chapter 1. 
I read from verse 5. 1 John 1, verse 5. The Bible says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to do what? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So if someone tells you that he has never sinned, that he had never had any issue with sin before, that person is lying. However, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. I just read it to you. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. And if you confess your sins, if you repent of your sins, if you acknowledge the sacrifice of Christ as your only hope for salvation, then Jesus will forgive you and give you a new life give you a life that is free from sin. Not that you repent today and then you come back next Sunday to repent because you are still sinning. No, he's going to give you grace, give you power, give you wisdom on how to live above sin. And that is the essence of our being a church. That is the essence of our coming to fellowship. Thank God you are in your apartment there. We are here. The other brother is there. We are all linked up together to hear the word of God. This is the main reason. Nothing else matters as much. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Don't stay in sin. Because if sin is allowed in your life, it will eventually destroy you. Remember how uh, David said in Psalm 51 verse 5, in Sin did my mother conceive me. The nature of sin is there, but the blood of Jesus is greater than the blood of Abel. And the blood of Jesus will wash away your sins as you repent and make your way right today in Jesus' name. Let's go to the second point now. Avoiding the pool of the world. My sister, I know that you may feel lonely because you don't have the kind of friends you had before. Don't worry about it. You have to avoid the pool of the world. My brother, you may not feel as lively as you used to be when you will go to the bars and drink and just have a quote-unquote nice time. Now you don't do that anymore. Don't worry about it. You are a child of God. The children of God are your family. Don't you see? Don't you see? We were more than 40 of us together here last week just share the word of God, sing together, greet each other, eat together, take pictures together. That is good enough. That is honorable enough. There is no reason why we cannot do that in somebody else's house also. Children of God coming together. Nothing dirty, nothing unrighteous going on. What am I saying? You must not give in to the pool of the world. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things, excuse me, that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Brethren, the command is clear. Love not the world. Pastor, are you about to tell me what I cannot wear, where I cannot go? I'm telling you the word of God. Love not the world. If you love the world, if you are so attached to the world, if you are so controlled by the world, if your life is defined by your affection for the world, you are not of God. You are not going to get to heaven. You are going to waste your life. That will not happen to us in Jesus' name. The world is the sum total of the ways of human life outside of God. The world is the sum total of the ways of human life outside of God. The dresses, the shows, 
the money, the pleasure, the fame, the games, whatever you think of. If those things occupy your heart, you are not of God. If you can miss church, miss fellowship, just so that you can have a little more fun, you are not of God. You have to be careful so that you love God and you do not love the world. Are there things we have to, you know, be involved in so that we get our job done? Well, yes, we go to work, we have to pay our bills. Well, yes, we go to school, we have to, you know, get education to advance ourselves. That is not what I'm saying. But your social engagement, your attachment to things that are not compulsory, must not take the place of God in your heart, must not take your affection for Christ and the things of Christ in your heart. Do you have a daily devotion? Do you spend time studying the word of God or praying every day, reading the Bible? Oh, not really. But you have so much time for Facebook. Mind you, I'm not saying Facebook is wrong, but you have so much time for Facebook and you don't have time for the word of God, the daily devotional that is sent out to you every day, the one that is sent for the children. You don't look into that. My brother, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Don't let those things occupy your heart. If you do, the Bible says you are not of God. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. The Bible says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. That is God warning you that everything you are looking for now is what somebody else has had before. Everything you are trying to do now, oh, I have to buy a house. I have to buy a house. I have to save money. Other people have saved money. They've bought a house before. After you have lived in the house and everything and your life is over, other people will also save and buy houses. So don't get unduly attached to what you intend to do or to what you are doing, to the negligence of God, to the negligence of his kingdom, to the negligence of those things of eternal value. Brethren, there's nothing new under the sun. The things under the sun will not hold us back from walking with God in Jesus' name. 1 Timothy chapter 5, I read verse 6. The Bible says, but she or he that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So if everything about your life is focused on pleasure, always about celebration, anniversary, dedication, uh, this and that. If there is no party, you are not interested. The Bible says you are dead spiritually. You are out of the family of God. You may be socializing with people who are godly, but you're not godly yourself. You don't have the power of God present in your own life. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Brethren, the world pulls us, if we let it, away from God. If you allow the world to pull you too hard, it's going to pull you away from God. You just discover that for a week, you have not even opened your Bible. You just discover that for a month, you have not even done anything in the keeping with the will of God. You are just chasing dollars. You are just paying bills. You are just doing things that are just, you know, uh, 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 temporal, things that have temporal value. We must not be like that. The affections of the world, the attractions of the world, and the attention of the world can choke a believer's path to heaven. I'll say that again. The affections of the world, the things we love to do, the attractions of the world, the things that give you a lot of desire and the attention, the time, the actual time you spend of the world can choke a believer's path to heaven. If you are from Africa or even here, you have been to the rural area before and you are walking through a bush path and it's very you know, broad. If people stop walking on it, it becomes narrow because the weeds are growing. And if the thorns keep growing, 
You can't even walk through it because the thorns might pierce you. Brethren, the things of the world are like those thorns. If you allow them to grow, they take your attention away from God. You that used to pray a lot before, now you are not even interested in prayer anymore. You that you are always available in the fellowship, even if it's just you and the pastor, you are there. Now you are no more interested. There's a problem. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where, God, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Mortify therefore your members. Bring under control your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. If we allow sin, we are disobedient. If we are disobedient, we are not of God. So we have to watch it. The devil, the world, and sin as are completely against the purpose of God for our lives. Open your Bible to Galatians. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So a Christian's focus should be on Christ. The way you raise your children, Christ. The way you relate to your spouse, Christ. The way you do your work, Christ. You live in such a way that if Jesus were to show up physically and say, oh, that's my daughter, that's my sister, oh, that's my brother, that's my son, guess what? Nobody will be surprised because your life is continually reflecting, showing forth the nature and the image of Christ. Loving the world, that is, worldliness, is enmity with God. We have to escape that pollution. We have to avoid that pollution. Thank God for our children in this church. We have to teach them how to avoid unclean things before they get confused by the world, by their teachers in school. We have to show them the way of righteousness. Let's read Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these, that is by these promises, ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. It is not enough to say, oh, there's a problem with sin. Jesus is saying, you have to escape that corruption. You have to escape that pollution. You have to escape that evil. If you are a true Christian, sin must not have dominion over you. You have dominion over sin. You have dominion over the world. The Lord will give that unto us in Jesus' name. So as the word of the Lord is coming out today, you have to look at yourself and say, I need to have victory over sin. I need to have victory over attachment to the world. You are making X amount of dollars per hour. If you are offered three times that amount, are you willing to miss service just to go and make that money? Are you willing to say, God, forgive me? You know my financial challenges. Let me go and make this money. I am not going to commit sin there. I will come back. Well, you love that money more than God. That's what it means. Brethren, Jesus is coming soon. The Lord will help us. He will find us faithful in Jesus' name. We are going to the third point. So we can have time to pray. And the third point is antagonizing, opposing the power of the devil. The Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. Why not open James? James chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. God wants us to resist 
the devil. The devil is a fallen angel. The devil does not have authority over you. The devil is not allowed to oppress you. Let there be no member of this church who is continually afraid of the devil. Pastor, I don't know how, it's, how I'm feeling. Pastor, I don't know why it's always me. Oh, sister, this is my problem. It is a demonic oppression. You, child of God, Satan is under your feet. In Jesus' name. Brethren, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We read verse 27. Ephesians 4, verse 27. The Bible says, Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. You want to conquer the devil? Don't give place to him. Don't give place to him. Once you give place to him, like Eve, then he may find a way in. Don't forget, he's like a snake. Don't forget, he's not always going to show up as a roaring lion. The Bible does not call the devil a roaring lion. It says, as a roaring lion. Go and read 1 Peter 5 verse 8. He's trying to devour. But listen to this. Satan cannot devour you until he has defiled you. You get that? Satan cannot devour you until he has defiled you. If he has not defiled you, if you are born again, you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are a child of God, Satan cannot do anything to you. You may not even know much of the Bible. You may not be like a very deep person, but your life is clean. He cannot touch you. Have you forgotten when Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh and he findeth what? Nothing in me. The devil will not find anything on you in Jesus' name. So like we just read, Ephesians 4 verse 27, neither give place to the devil. In your relationship, don't give place to the devil. In your workplace, don't give place to the devil. In your pursuit of your daily bread, legitimate income, don't give place to the devil. In your relationship with the person you have married or you want to marry, don't give place to the devil. In the way you handle money, don't give place to the devil. I have some points here. Number one, resist the devil. Resist him. We already read James chapter 4 verse 7. Number two, restrain the devil. You know when you restrain somebody, you place a limit on him. You bind his hand, you bind his leg, he's unable to move. Restrain the devil. That is, do not give him space. We just read Ephesians 4, 27. Somebody wants to be uh, angry with you and everything. He's carrying it hot. You two are carrying it hot. No, no. Restrain the devil. Don't give the devil place to cause fighting there. Number three, repel the devil. Repel the devil. Those of you who did physics, you remember what we talk about. Uh, similar poles repel, opposite poles attract. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Brethren, you must be able to open your mouth and say no to the devil. You must be able to open your mouth and reject the counsel of the devil upon your life. Maybe you slept and you had a bad dream and you feel afraid. You pray against the dream. You don't have to just sit down and you are sweating and you are so scared. No, you are a child of God. You reject it and that's the end. Not that you are now looking around, oh, who will deliver me? Who, is, who, who, who has delivered you already? Jesus Christ. Who has given you victory already? Jesus Christ. So don't allow yourself to be a, you know, a victim of the devil. A footmat for the devil to walk upon. It will not be so for you in Jesus' name. So number one, resist the devil. Number two, restrain the devil. Number three, repel the devil. Number four, redirect the devil send him back send him back he does not belong to you send him back he does not belong to you send him to the bottomless pit luke chapter 8 luke chapter 8 verse 31 
to 33. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them, that this allowed them to enter into them. And he allowed them. Verse 33. Then went the devils, not one, many. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Brethren, you can chase the devil out of your home. You can chase the devil out of your body. Doctor says something, but you know what God has said is different. You chase the devil out of your body. You chase sickness and the spirit of sickness out of your body. You chase devourers out of your home. Brethren, repel the devil. Redirect him into the bottomless pit. You know these devils, these uh, demons, they were inside this guy. And what did Jesus do? He redirected them out of him into those pigs. Pigs are not important. I mean, if you want to eat pork, that's okay. But especially in the in the Jewish culture, it was an animal they didn't even eat. So, like uh, they were explaining to us when we went to Israel, that village where this happened, most likely there were some Samaritans there. Because the Samaritans used to eat pig, but Jews doesn't eat pig. So, regardless, whatever the case was, Jesus chased the devil out. God will chase the devil out of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, repress the devil. Repress him. Don't let him express himself. Don't let his word come into your, into your home. Don't let what the devil is saying come into your expression. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him, that is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. So as you repress the devil, he will not find expression in your life, in your home, and in all that pertains to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, we have to put on the whole armor of God. Remember, we are talking about antagonizing the devil. We have to put on the whole armor of God that we may, excuse me, that we may stand, that we may overcome the devil. We have to put on, not part of it, but the whole armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So if you want victory over sin, victory over the world, victory over the devil, guess what? You have to put on the whole armor of God and the Lord will give us victory in Jesus' name. That armor must be complete for total victory. You can read verses 13 to 18 for the full description. Brethren, Jesus has given us the victory. I said Jesus has given us the victory. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, 1, 5, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, because of that victory we have received, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. For the third uh, scripture today, we were taught about consecration, serving God, giving God all we have in order to honor his name. In this message, you have heard about victory over sin, the world, and the devil. God wants us to have total victory, and that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Why not go before the Lord right now in prayer and say, Lord, I seek victory. I cannot be struggling with sin for the rest of my life because everyone that sins, living in sin, we end up in hell. But I know the blood of Jesus was shed for my redemption. Lord, cleanse me from the power of sin. The pull of the world must not have any effect on me anymore. A small boy, a small girl cannot pull a you know g-wagon the car is too strong 
to be pulled. The car will only go in the direction it wants to go. Satan cannot pull you. Satan cannot pull God in you. The world cannot pull you. But the word of God is clear. Love not the world. If you love the world, then you are not of God. If you love the world, then you are distracting yourself from Christian living. Pray that the Lord will give you victory over sin. Let there be no member of this church who is still struggling with sin. You are sinning privately. You are indulging in unrighteousness. People know that you are active in the church, but in your private life you are sinning. No. It must not happen. Brethren, we still have some time. Pray, pray that God will help you. Victory over the devil. Your home is not for the devil. Your heart is not for the devil. Your bank account, your debit card is not for the devil. And you are spending so much money on things that should not be taking your money away. Reject it. Reject it. Reject it. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Pray that the Lord will give you victory over the devil. Victory is for you. Jesus has got that victory for us already. God has procured that victory for us through Jesus Christ. You should not be suffering, just struggling to live above sin, just struggling to live the Christian life. No, not anymore. Not anymore. Pray that the Lord will help you. In the name of Jesus, you give me victory in Jesus' name. Only unto you in Jesus' name. Follow me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh. Lord in Jesus' name, abide in grace in Jesus' name. Oh God, please, oh, God in Jesus' name, grace in Jesus' name. Oh, in righteous glory, clean oh God in Jesus' name. Oh, oh God, let me if you obey the God in Jesus' name. That what will be completed, our righteousness become. Also, Lord, in Jesus' name, we are called unto holiness. We are called unto righteous living. We are called unto purity. Help me, Lord, to be pure. Help me, Lord, to be clean. Help me, Lord, to obey thy word. I pray that we can be a portion of God in Jesus' name. To open the old foundation in Jesus' name. Pray that the victory shall be yours in every aspect of your life. We are going into a new month very soon. You will live a life of victory. Satan will not hold you down. Satan will not hold me down. We shall be victorious through Christ Jesus.